Hey guys, so today we've got the B450A Pro Max MSI uh, motherboard. So I have got this motherboard to pair with an AMD Ryzen 5 3600. And why did I get this one? Well, it had quite a lot of good features. So you can have four DDR4 memory slots and it supports uh, pretty pretty good RAM. So I got, I got G-Skill RAM as well, so I can use that 3200 megahertz. Um, and also it came with a lot of PCI Express slots as well. So you've got a PCI Express 3.0, uh, by 16 slot, and you also got, uh, another PCI Express 2.0 slot and X16 slot, and you got four times PCI Express 2.0, uh, times one slots, which it's handy to have all those slots if you are looking into getting into mining. So that's definitely... Uh, good to have all those slots available. Um, so it has a VGA port, DVI-D port, and an HDMI port for onboard graphics. So if you're using a integrated uh, Ryzen um, or AMD CPU that has graphics, then that's um, good to have as well. Uh, it supports two-way AMD Crossfire technology. It's got two uh, SATA 60 gigabit uh, ports, one M2 slot, and four times SATA. Well, well, for the for the B450 chipset, four times SATA 60 gigabit, 60 gigabit uh, port. So, the stuff that I said about M2 and the two times slots for SATA, those were for the CPU, allocated CPU. Um, as well, it supports RAID 0, RAID 1, and RAID 10 for SATA storage devices. You've got two USB 3.0, 3.2 Gen 2 uh, Type-A ports on the back panel, uh, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 slots uh, on the internal USB 3.2 Gen 1 connector. So you can see it's got some really nice, um, well, I guess, I don't know, aesthetic touches. So that uh, brushed paneling, it is sharp as well. So just be careful when you're handling it too. You don't cut yourself. It also comes with six USB 2.0 uh, slots as well. So we've got two type A slots on the back panel and then four ports available through the internal USB 2.0 connectors. For the AMD CPU, you've got two USB 3.2 Gen 1 slots for type A on the back panel allocated to that. It supports 7.1 channel high definition audio. And in this shot, in, in this shot as well, I'm installing my G-Skill RAM too. I think I'm only just installing one for now, um, but there's it's a 16 gigabyte module, so you've got room to upgrade to 64. But I found that you really only need maybe 32 or even just 16. It just really depends because for me, I do a lot of media editing and I have a lot of windows open, so it's just handy to have that memory um, available to me as well. And it's just got the standard internal connectors that you'll find as well f that you'll need to connect to your uh, various uh, PC parts in your PC case as well. Uh, it's got a flash BIOS button as well, which is uh, pretty handy to have. I know that my first motherboard, it didn't really have that. So that's definitely good to have. Uh, it's got a PS uh, forward slash 2 combo port, VGA port. And a couple of different other ones as well. And it's an ATX form factor. It's got nine mounting holes and it's it costs $135, which is pretty pretty good, I guess, for the features that you do get. Um, so as well here, so what I'm doing is I'm actually installing the um, Ryzen 5 uh, CPU. Now, this is probably like the third or fourth time that I've um, put in a CPU. And as always, uh, you want to be really careful when you're doing this. It, it, it doesn't matter if it's Intel or AMD, because with your CPU, you have to be really patient as well that you don't bend your pins. I think I've found, like I've heard stories where people have put their CPU in, so AMD one, and then there's actually a thermal paste on the back. Oh no, not on the back, it's on the um, cooler. So so basically what, what happens is that they actually put on the cooler, but then for some reason the computer doesn't turn on and then somehow they get a bit panicky and then they try to remove the CPU. But sometimes what happens is if you're not careful, you can actually bend the pins by doing that if you're doing a twisting motion. I've been really lucky when I've done it because 
uh, I I had actually my computer on, and then, um, well, actually no, I didn't. I I had it um off for a while, and I needed to have a remove the CPU, and I think I needed to either just um check the thermal paste or something. But the problem is because it's not been used as much. Um, there was a problem with uh actually. So you see here, we've got thermal paste already on there because it's kind of wet. Um, but Basically, the problem is the thermal paste was actually just stuck to making the CPU stick to the actual cooler. So I accidentally yanked it out and I was really lucky not to bend any CPU pins. I think I was lucky because I didn't use, I, I basically yanked it straight out. So even though it went out of the lock position, it didn't bend any pins. So I was really lucky and like, like the pins didn't actually fall out. Like I've, I've heard where like people just got frustrated as well because they bended the pins and then they tried to bend it back but they weren't patient enough and then they actually lost so those pins so it's kind of once you lose the pins it's basically game over you like you know good you goodbye maybe three hundred dollars you probably spend on or two hundred dollars so you have to be really patient when you're assembling a, a computer it's taught me a lot of patience like and normally i think i'm a patient person but I've spent like 12 hours, 20 hours over two days just trying to troubleshoot, you know, the PC. But that's the nature of PC building. Just like if you're building a car as well, you have to troubleshoot things. So you have to go through a checklist. You have to remain rational and you can't just, you can't just um, panic because that doesn't really do anything. So here I've already um, installed the fan. The screws to screw it in have like this spring thing in it so that you, I think you don't like... It, it allows you allows it to be uh, retained without having you screw it like too fully in too much, and the stock cooler is actually pretty adequate for my the CPU that I have here because I'm not going to be doing um super heavy overclocking. But if you are thinking about doing that, then do get a dedicated C a CPU either water cooling or air cooling that's um that that will do the job. But this one is does the job so and I don't really I wouldn't really be overclocking my CPU anyway so I mean that's about it so I've got my RAM in I've got my CPU in now I just need to have my graphics card and that's about it um really like um it's it's it, it seems like a simple process but for the first time first timer it can definitely be a bit intimidating and a bit difficult so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, do tune in to my future videos. I have a constant schedule and I try to upload weekly as well. Let me know if you want me to unbox um, some other different stuff as well in, in future videos as well. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.